of the cross. He must see the cross as something terrible. It was terrible. It's, it brings us into a place, Gethsemane, that it declares not my will. They were born to do a divine plan that which unfolds concerning the people. We cross your hearts and we to do what you do. What do you do? What is your gift and your calling? You can only find that out from God. Good morning, good morning, my Lord God. Justice is required, but we want to talk about Kingdom United. In short, K-U, Kingdom United, because we are a united nations, all nations, and the Kingdom United is as one nation under God. When we talk about that, we talk about that in this last hour, the hour that we understand that God is opening up the revelation of the new day. In Hebrews 9 and 27 and 28, from the Passion Translation, it makes it real clear if you slow down and see it, if you slow down and hear it, because what you have to understand is there's two men in the earth, Adam and Christ. And the truth of the matter is Jesus became both, and watch this, he took both to the grave, but he resurrected the Christ and sent it back and put it in a people. Oh my God. Let's say that again. Be, be, because you're going to see something and you got to surround, you got to have an ear because he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. I said there is two men in the earth. Two men in the earth. One was taken. And another one was left. But what you have to understand, the transition was this, that Adam fell and Jesus became the first Adam. He not only did that, he also became the second man. So in all actuality, what he did in our stead is phenomenal. You do have to understand you are in God before the foundation of the world. So the only purpose that you're on the planet is because God needed you. See, heaven didn't need you because God created you out of himself in the heavens for the purpose of changing earth. So here's what you see. You see that Jesus, God, disrobed himself, became a man once for every man so that he could become the head of the new man, resurrected and sent and went back to the father and he was clothed with the glory. So let's say it in simple terms. Jesus came from God. He knew why he came. He fulfilled his purpose in the earth and went back to the Father. Now, how did that process affect you? Because in the scriptures, in Hebrews 9, 27 and 28, it says it like this. Every human being is appointed to die once and at the then to face judgment, every man, 28. But when we die, 
we will be face to face with Christ, the one who experienced death once for all to bear the sins of many. So the truth of the matter is that your judgment is in the face of Jesus Christ. That's going to be important as we go. But by faith, you're going to have to believe this thing because what you have to realize is Jesus is going to do it once for every man, but then every man got to face him. It goes on, it says, And now to those who eagerly await him, he will appear the second time, watch this one, important, not to deal with sin, but to bring us to fullness of salvation. So in, in essence, what it says is that Jesus came the first time to deal with sin. But when he comes the second time, it's going to be to bring us into the fullness of salvation. Don't run too fast now. Don't run too fast. Because if God's going to do it, he's going to do both. He's not going to require you to do it if he's going to do it. So let's go on. Let's roll on. Because judgment requires a sacrifice for death. That can be you or him. Jesus was that sacrifice that God desired, and he was the Lamb of God. John 1, 28 and 29 is the scenario. It says, And the very next day, John saw Jesus coming to him to be baptized. Now, you do have to realize that John was doing the baptism because John was the forerunner of Jesus. In other words, it's a whole story that was literally caused him to be born really of a woman six months apart, but that's not where we are now. You see, John saw Jesus coming to be baptized by him. Now, this all took place at Bethany. When Jesus saw, and when Jesus, when John was baptizing at this place, and the place was in the Jordan River, and this was the place of the crossover. So this is why people always talk about Jordan River I'm bound to cross. So what they don't realize is that John was baptizing in the Jordan and the lamb showed up to take us across. My God, that's good news. John cried out, look, there he is. <laughs> look, there he is. What? John's lamb. He will take away the sin of the world. That's the one. That's the one I've been telling you about. That's the one I said, I'll baptize you with water, but there's one coming that's mighty in the right. That's the one. He says, I told you that a mightier one than I would come who is far greater than I am because he existed long before I was born. In other words, he was saying that the one that is coming was actually born in existence before I was. He says, my baptizing was for the preparation of his appearing. In other words, I baptized you in water and what I did in water, I prepared you for him to come. Remember your water baptism? After you gave your life to the Lord, you were baptized. But after you were baptized, you were waiting on another. Oh, bless God. So what happens is, he says, my baptism was for the preparation of the appearing of the spiritual one. 
even though I had not yet experienced him, in other words, the water baptism and the Holy Ghost baptism is two different experiences. The baptism of water was because you had the seed in you. The baptism of the Holy Spirit was to activate that seed. So what it says is that maybe you hadn't experienced him since you've been born again. But now he's going to appear the second time in the form of the Holy Spirit. Then John, then as John baptized Jesus, watch what takes place. Because really the same thing that takes place with Jesus is what takes place with you. He says, as John baptized Jesus, he spoke these words. He says, I see the Spirit of God appearing like a dove descending. So there is a descending of the Holy Spirit from the heavenly realm and landed upon him. And it rested upon him, and from that time forward, there was a movement that was released by something greater. And really, this is what Martin Luther King said. Martin Luther King said this. He said, my eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. I don't care what happened to me now. I have seen the glory. And I don't care what happened to me now. So when you actually experience the descending glory of God, it's actually God himself clothing you. And you feel protected. There is no fear that comes upon you once you're clothed. There is no misunderstanding that comes upon you when you're clothed. Because the clothing of the Holy Spirit calls you to be able to see to be able to hear and to have an understanding that you are united to your brethren, the nations of the world. Let me say it again, what Martin Luther King saw. He says, my eyes have seen the coming of the glory of the Lord. I may not get there with you, but we as a people will get to the promised land. He was saying the glory is the promise that brings you into the land and clothes you, good God Almighty, with peace, joy. It's the kingdom of God arising in spiritual corn. You'll see it as I go. Let me say it again. My eyes have seen the glory. <laughs> My eyes have seen the glory. When you see the glory, when your eyes see the glory and your understanding is open and now you can begin to say, I don't care what happened to me now. I just want to do God's will. So whenever you meet a people and you're introduced to a people that get to the point that I just want to do God's will. Now they've come into the realization that I came to do what I'm clothed to do, and you can't stop me now because I'm closed by the glory of God. And, uh, and John going and says, I can tell you for sure that this is the Son of God. Whenever you're baptized in the Holy Spirit and experience God in that way, you know he lives. Because not only does he live in you, now you have been clothed by him and the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit has become one with you and it has brought you into a perfect environment. An environment that you can hear the voice of God into an environment that you can embrace your brothers and sisters regardless of race, creed, or color. He has brought you into a perfect environment that you understand I can do business out of this place in peace has brought me into a perfect environment that I can bring education out that's pure from this place. I can, I can present a media understanding from this place. So this is a place, not a location, it's clothed 
by the glory of God. In this place, politician or politics is formed because it's kingdom oriented. This is the ecclesia. This is the very presence of God. This is the company of those that will declare that in the entertainment is God the inexpired. That the families have found their rightful place. This is the ark of God. Oh my God. This is the place that we were looking for. This is the place that I came into the earth. I was born of a woman so I could be born again to be clothed over by this ark. Because this ark is in him. It's in him. I move. It's in him. I live. It's in him. I have my being. It's in him. I just be. I see. I hear. I can partake of this new wine. I can love the body. Why? It's because I have embraced the light of the world. Now I have become the light of the world. I have experienced the fire of God. So now I am the fire of God. And you have to realize one thing. My God. The first one. The beginning. The source. My God. The commencement. See, people have a commencement speech. They think it's the, it's the end of the person's graduation. It is. It's the end of their preparation, but now it's a commencement to send them out to the living reality of what they have learned. Education system haven't explained that to you. They thought that a commencement exercise means you have arrived. No. A commencement exercise says what you have done. You have finished the preparation so you can go out and begin what you have learned. That's what a commencement is all about. So whenever you're closed by the presence of God, then now you are prepared. You have been closed over so you have been, you have been empowered by the government of God that brings you into a place that you begin to understand our experience. Apostolic fullness, so that's the season we're in. John 17, verse 21, 20, 22, 23. When Jesus stood to the Father, he said, I have finished what you have sent me to, to do. I have really come and finished what I came to do. Now I'm ready to return to you to be clothed by you yourself in which I had before the world began. That's key. Now, Jesus said that, but here's what you got to realize. If Jesus was saying that about himself, he was also saying that about you. Because remember, you were in him. So whenever the Father clothed him, it clothed you also. Good God Almighty. So when you actually see John 17, Jesus' high priestly prayer, he said the same glory that you have given me, I have given them that we can become one. So now you do have to understand that the glory has covered over him, and as it is of the head, so it is the body. So it's brought us into a place in 1 Corinthians 12, 1 through 14, it's the new communion. It's the body of Christ. And 1 Corinthians 11, it says, do this in remembrance of me, until I come or arrive in the kingdom. And 1 Corinthians 12, he came by the Holy Ghost into the kingdom of God. That was the body of Christ being open in paradise now. And there was an orderly flow of the kingdom of God. Just want to introduce it, but we're going there because people are saying there's only the apostles of the Lamb. But Jesus became the first apostle of the Spirit, being the head of the 42nd generation and calling the apostles of the Spirit, you're my shoulder, you're my government. 
and the government is upon the shoulders. The head is Christ. The government on the shoulders, which is the apostles' fullness, divine government. In Genesis 49 and 28, it talks about the holy city. My God. It talks about Judah. It talks about Jerusalem. And it appears in manifestation over in Revelation 21 and 22. And it talks about it's the 12 gates of the city. It's coming into this new place with the new understanding that we are whole, we are complete. And now we're getting ready to walk out in this new place. Hallelujah. This will blow your mind. When God was showing this to me, I remember listening to Wayne Dyer. And Wayne Dyer used to always say things like this. Who told you that you were separated from God? In other words, he was saying the, uh, the Adamic fall was Adam. Hallelujah, it wasn't you. <sighs> we... Mm -mm. We came in sin because we were birthed out of the likeness of Adam. But the truth of the matter, what came out of God was in the foundation of God in the beginning. Watch this. If you were in him before the foundation of the world, you was one with him. What? Who can separate you? In other words, the truth of the matter is, and this ought to tell, this ought to excite black people. This ought to excite you that's saved by grace. This ought to ex excite you that's not a natural Jew. This ought to excite you that's not a natural Israelite. Because what you understand, you was dispatched from God and you've never been a Jew. You've never been natural Israel. You've never been separated from God. You left God as a spirit and you landed as a spirit in your mother's womb. Who? And the only reason that you were in the flesh because you needed to have a body to function. The real you was not the body. The real you was the life in the body. You do have to understand, you never left God. God never left you. You came out of God into the land for the purpose of God, and you'll go back into God. Here's what you got to realize now. We are saved by grace through faith. It's a gift of God. You do have to understand Jesus died for one man. And he died for all men. For it's appointed unto men once to die. Then the judgment. It was talking about Jesus. So he came. So he could become sin. So we could become the righteousness of God. And there was a great exchange. He took our sin. Good God Almighty. We took his righteousness. He resurrected from the dead. And what he said, I am going to send back the Holy Spirit. I am going to send back the promises. So all of you that's rejected, rejected the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, you are rejecting the second coming. Oh God Almighty. And the second coming is coming not to deal with your sin. He did that when he came the first time. He died for that. Now he sent back the promise, which is the Holy Ghost, to actually cleanse you and bring you into full salvation. Spirit, soul, body from the inside out. You never left God. Jesus did in your behalf. The cross is a picture of how Jesus opened paradise because he told the thief on the cross, today you shall be with me in paradise. So when Jesus actually died on the cross, it was the end of the old day, darkness, and it was opening up the new day, my God, and the resurrection ushered in the new life, and it really he resurrected from the dead. So the resurrection was paradise restored. 
So what you have to realize is that when Jesus went back to paradise without sin, you were in him. And all the sins of your past was washed away because that was the nature of Adam. So now by a new nature, you are a new creation. The glory of God now has returned. The glory from Jesus is ascended up. And he was sitting at the right hand of the Father. But he said, if I go not away, the Comforter will not come. But he ascended into the heavens. Paradise was open and he was clothed by the Father himself. And the Father was well pleased. And he sent back the promise of the Holy Spirit because he wanted the glory to return. Why was that? It's because you was born in Adam. Because you took on the nature of the fallen Adam. Now you have to take on the nature of the resurrected Adam, Christ. So that you can actually walk in the righteousness of God. And what the blood of Jesus paid for as a sacrifice once for all. So it says this, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So Jesus died in your place. So the glory now has been restored and you allow the glory to come on you. The bottom line is justice must be, must be served. So there is a new life. There's a new understanding. There's a new joy. There is a new peace. Remember, all have sinned. Stop there. Because you're not a sinner. You were a sinner. You're saved by grace. You're not a saved sinner. You are just saved. Get it now. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But Jesus died in your place. He took your sin and gave you his righteousness. Now you're not sinner. Now you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. <coughs> so you didn't do it. He did it for you. So you looking into the perfect law of liberty, you see the mirror of who you are. And now you can say, oh, Father, this is what Jesus prayed. Now, remember, everything he was doing, he was doing for humanity because he had no sin. He says, oh, Father, glorify thou me. With thine own self. With the glory which I had with thee before the world was. So we realize now that what he did was he actually came and he took our place. And when he took our place, what he was actually doing and what he was actually saying is that now we're going to see something that we've never seen before. We've seen the reality of what God is saying. We've seen the reality of this new thing. We understand that God is doing something that he's never did before because what he's doing now is uniting the kingdoms of this world. He's, he's actually uniting all of those from Asia, he's uniting all of those from Africa, he's uniting all of those from Europe, he's uniting all of those from America, and here's what you have to realize, is he is actually establishing a kingdom global network, which is an apostolic alignment 
of the apostles that he has chosen by the Spirit. And what we're saying is that we are establishing what God has given Justice Fellowship International Network where we're networking those that are set free. Why is that essential? It's because what happens is that when I go to an assembly and I see people, they receive people and they tell them, if you believe with your heart, you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you shall be saved. Well, they confess that and then they tell them they're saved, but then they turn around in the next voice and says, now what you have to do, you have to be baptized and join this church. Now, what you just did, you just told them they were saved, but they got to be a member of another church. So what they did is they literally got delivered by the blood, set free by the power of God, Receive the Spirit of God, and the baptism should have actually been an external expression of an internal change, and they should never been born to religion again. So what you just did, you told them they were free, and then you put them back into a slavery camp of religion and said, now you got to work this thing. No, you got to work it from the inside out. You're agreeing with the Holy Spirit. Let me go on because I got to do a whole presentation about that. Because what we have to keep with it is to forsake not the assembly of yourselves together. That don't mean in a building. That means among people. That means there's a gathering together unto the Lord with an understanding. So we go from freedom of slavery and to a vision of the nations of the world. So what he's trying to get you to see is it's that Adam you were separated and by Christ I'm bringing you back into seeing the vision of a united nation. And that's the nations of the world. And the nations of the world is not all of the broken up ones. The nations of the world includes America, North, South, and Mexico, and Canada. And then you begin to see us in Asia. And Asia is all of the Asian countries, Japan and North Korea and South Korea, they're all one nation. And Africa, all of them, they're not divided, they're just Africa. And then you see Europe. Now what you have to realize is what is God saying to all the nations of the world? You need to return back to where you belong. Where you were born, that's your home. God didn't make no mistake. God didn't say America will save everybody. It says wherever you were born, that's where God needed you because you was dispatched from him so that you could be born of your mother to be in the place where you were birthed because that was your earthly place. We're going to bring this thing into a close now. We're going to have a short one. Why? It's because I need to be able to explain this to you because I've come to the realization that the reason why the whole world is in bondage to democracy is because they haven't understood that God sent back the Holy Spirit to establish a kingdom of one. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God's desire was to have the heavenly glory descend upon the earth to unite the earth so heaven and earth would mirror the same in the face of Jesus Christ. So what is it saying? We move from the freedom of slavery, from slavery into the vision of nations that was given. 
So if the vision has been given, why do we choose? Why don't we follow the vision? We choose the nation that has been given by the vision of the Lord. We choose the nation that has been given to all nations, a united nation. It's the gathering of one. And we're remembering that we are brethren. And the revelation will come after a cash, a kairos moment. That means when you encounter the Holy Spirit, whoo, it's almost like a lightning flash. That's what it says. It'll be like lightning. And it will change you instantly. And when that happens, you will look for a movement because that's what just happened. You entered into the movement. When you experience the vision of unity for all the colored of black people or Afro-American, when you experience that, you begin to see that Afro-Americans, South Koreans, North Koreans, by the Spirit, America, you begin to see and understand this was God bringing the nations together, and it was the nations that warred against each other because they didn't want to receive the vision of the Lord. And it was bringing it together, it was, says, now that the Afro-Americans are now aligning themselves with the Asian-Americans, and the Asian-Americans and the Afro-Americans is aligning themselves with the South Koreans and the North Korean nations by the Spirit of God, because the Spirit has no distance. They can have it in the nation, in the land where they are. They don't have to come to a location. They can just receive it, because this is part of the whole body of Christ. It's a part of the temple of God which we are. It's the beginning of the really the perfect tabernacle. And in this we'll bring it to a close because we are aligning ourselves to equip the new world view from the heavenly understanding of the kingdom of God in a biodynamic design, and the university detains all the nations of the world and establish a network that we call the United Nations, joining together by the Spirit of God and Christ being the head, and it's the body of Christ universally. So the kingdom united is all nations, all people, all colors into one because we are a united nation, a people with the Spirit of God. Let's fellowship one with another by the Spirit of the